Hey, what's up, guys? It's Procust here. I'm finally doing my Nomad Deck profile for you guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. I actually like my build a lot better than all the other builds that run Kaiser, uh, Road Decree, or just like a heavy trap lineup. Uh, it's actually quite different. It's my own build, and hopefully, you guys enjoy it. So, I'm just gonna jump straight into it. Uh, first, I play three Nomad Medjurot. This is very standard. Pretty much, Medjurot is equipped with a Noble Arms card. He becomes a level 5, and you can special summon a No Night Monster from your deck to the field in the in like defense position uh, when you control no other No Night Monsters, or when you control no other monsters. So pretty much he goes last for the, your big XE plays. Uh, then you got like 3 Boars. Pretty much Boars' effect is when he's equipped, he turns into a level 5. So when Jordan and Boars are your two guys that allow you to go for your rank 5 XEs. It's the only two cards in the deck that turn go from a level 4 to a level 5. And his effect is, uh, you can search three no alarm cards from your deck. Uh, your opponent selects one and you send the other two to the graveyard. The one that you select goes to your hand. It's really helpful for getting uh, Gwenefit into your graveyard and to allow for those um, future rank 4 XCs or 5 XCs so you can get the equips and grave. Uh, next play three Goins. Because the majority of Noel Knights are normal without the equipped, Gwen allows you special summon himself to go for the rank 4 XCs. And that's pretty much the only thing he does. But he does have 1900 attack, so he is like he can be a beta. Next, I play two Noel Knight Dryston. Um, if Dryston was a, Noel Knight a normal Noel Knight without the equipped, he would be a lot better, and I would actually play three. But he's not, and he's really just like an out to a lot of cards. Um, when he's equipped, you can destroy one face-up card on the field. Uh, this effect is mandatory, so you can't go like first turn Dryson, Destiny. Well, you can, but you just that would have to pop and re-equip. Um, yeah, going first turn Dryson is always like a bad idea. You always just keep him in your hand to like get rid of your opponent's um, power plays. Um, his second effect is um, pretty much when this guy's equipped with a Noble Arms card, your opponent cannot target your other monsters with less than 1800 attack for attacks. Yeah, or with card effects. Um, next, no one I play one Gauchvad. Gauchvad is really good in the late game, but more importantly, like, I use him for the 3 card OTK with a Medrock, Gwen, and a Noble Arms. You search out Gauchvad and use this effect to get back Gwen to go for the final XC. So Gauchvad in the OTK is good, and he's even better in the, uh, like, mid game when you just go search out your Gwen and go for the rank for XC. Um, for last Nomonite card, I play one Nomonite Torgus. Um, I only play him because I play Lady of the Lake, and he's also good with Gwen for like another type of uh, rank four XC. So he doesn't like do anything bad being in the deck. And he has 1800 attack and defense, so he's actually strong on both stats. Uh, then I play two Lady of the Lakes. Pretty much, if you have a Torgus in the graveyard, you can special summon him when she's summoned. And as you go for your rank, or your level five <laughs> synchro, um, if Ladies in the Lake is in your grave, you can, and you had control of the level five monster, you can turn the level five into a level four, switch summon Lady, and go for another level five XC, um, <laughs> a level five synchro. Yeah, Lady's really good because like the uh, synchro is actually one of the better uh, extra deck cards, just because it allows a constant searching when it destroys a monster. Uh, next, I play two Guinevere's and Noble Arms. I only owned one because I was pretty slow with jumping onto the No One Night bandwagon. Anyway, so Gwenefer is actually the card that makes the deck good. Because once per turn you can equip Gwenefer from your deck or, um, sorry, your hand or graveyard to a No Night monster. So Gwenefer makes Dryson live, it makes Gauchavad live, and it makes Medrot live. So if you have a top deck, uh, Medrot, Dryston, or Gauchavad, you're in a good position, so because it allows you to make a really, really strong play. And apart from that, its also its effect is also um uh, the must the noble knight monster gains 300 attack, and if it's a light, if the equipped monster would be destroyed by a card effect. You can destroy this card instead. And if it was a dark monster, um, the equipped monster battles opponent's monster. At the start of the damage step, you can destroy your opponent's monster and this card. And it's pretty helpful with the dark effect if you because um Majorot uh Boars and Yeah, that's it. They go to dark when they're equipped. And it also helps with Ignoble Highlands. 
Um, okay, for the for the next three monsters, I play Triple Effect Veil. I play Triple Effect Veil because this is a very um, low trap count, and Triple Effect Veil allows you to slow down your opponent, allows for you to go for your pushes first, or your power plays first, and it's generally just like a really good card. And you can also use Effect Veil if you really need to to make a high lesson, because it requires one tuner and one Noble Knight non-tuner. So yeah, and the last card I play is Honest, because most of the cards in the deck are light. And that's it for the monster count. Uh, for the spells and Noble Arms cards, I play two Noble Arms of Destiny, two Excalibur, two Galison, one Caliban, and one Aphrodite. Uh, you should always play at, uh, at maximum two of any of them, because you can only control one ex per Destiny on the field, same with Galison, Caliban, and Aphrodite. With Excalibur, you can control more than one on the field. And with Aventon and Caliban, it's better to play them at one because their effects isn't that great. And once you search them with boars and they're either in the graveyard or in your hand, they really just help your uh, XC players. Uh, Destiny, once per turn, protects your monsters from battle and, and card effects. Scalibur prevents your monsters from being targeted. Galaton, when equipped, um, gains a thousand attack, but lo your monster loses 200 attack every standby phase. Caliban gains a solid 500, and once per turn you can gain 500 life points. Avidita destroys the set card when your monster loses 500 attack. That's it for the uh, no arms. Uh, for the other spells, I play three Potted Dwellies. Now this is when the uh, this uh, profile differs from everybody else. Like I don't play Kaiser Colosseum or Royal Decree just because I don't want to play a lockdown deck anymore. They're they're fun to play, but after a while it gets kind of lazy. And Pot of Duality just allows for you to go off uh, next turn with your combos. Allows to set up your future plays, get your defenses right, like adding a Veiler or Forbidden Lance to your hand. And overall just thins out the deck. So I actually like Pot of Duality quite a lot. Uh, then I played two space before removing back row. You never need like three space in the main deck because um, your opponent's not going to side in. Because you only need the third space for like um, games two and three when your opponent actually sides in cards to get time to stop you. So yeah, two space in the main. Uh, two Forbidden Lance. You want your uh, Boars or Madrop player to actually go off, so having the Lance to protect it is always good. Uh, one Rota, because this is the actual, actually, actual only <laughs> uh, search card in the deck. My flashlight just got turned off, that was weird. Uh, one Forbidden Lance. You would want to put uh, Queen, Artorius, or Lady of the Lake in the graveyard. This allows you to go for your other players. And play one Dark Hole. Just like extremely better than Dark or, um, Book of Moon, sorry, because it allows to clear the board and allows you to go for the three card OTK. It's actually hilarious if you ever do it. Um, and that's it for the spells. And for the only trap I actually play in the deck is one Treacherous Trap Hole. A lot of people don't expect it, and it's pretty much um you can you can just <coughs> sorry if your opponent controls two monsters on the field, you can activate it and destroy those two monsters. Um, but you can't activate it if you have any other trap cards in your graveyard, so this is why you can only play like one Treacherous. And yeah, it's actually really good, so your opponent goes for a play, some two monsters, Treacherous, blow it up, next turn just win. It's actually amazing. Um, and that's the only trap in the deck. For the extra deck, I play two Autorigus. Pretty much when he's XC summoned, you can equip three normal arms from your graveyard to this guy. And then you can detach, blowing up the number of set cards, like spell and trap cards, for the total um, noble arms equipped, you or you control. So if you had like a noble knight monster with like five equips, and then you just summon this guy, and even if the no the noble arms aren't equipped to this guy, you can still destroy up to five um, spell and trap cards on the field. So he's actually really powerful. Um, now I play two sacred of high lance to them. Uh, same effect with this guy. You you get to add the three noble arms card from your graveyard. Once per turn, you can detach to destroy a monster on your opponent's side of the field. And his other effect that a lot of people don't know about is when he's destroyed, you can special summon a noble knight monster from your graveyard. So you can get back your Madrot. And then um, all the equips, then equip to Madrot because like chain links and stuff. So then you can just go off again next turn. It's just really amazing. Uh, then I play two high lancers. This is the best card in the deck because he actually searches your noble knights and noble arms cards when he destroys a monster by battle. So you would always want to like keep him at like at a low attack, maybe like give, give him a um, 
uh, Guinevere, or maybe Destiny. And you just keep like attacking just to keep getting searches up. Uh, that's it for the no like knight extra deck. Then I play one stylish. Just because he's a great card and great way to get over monsters. One Constellar Omega. Um one Blade Armor Ninja. I play Blade Armor Ninja with Excalibur just for the OTK. And the reasons why I play one of each instead of like two of two is because of two of one. It's because I like to have a variety in the extra deck just in case my opponent has a monster that I can't get over. Like a 3,000 defender like Redox or something, I can just go Excalibur, hit it, run it over, and hopefully still win. Depending on whatever, whatever else I have on the field. And because I don't have a one proxy Abyss Dweller, I always borrow it, but it, um, Mermails are extremely good this format. Well, not really extremely good, they've always been good, but yeah, <laughs> one Abyss Dweller just for that. One Maystroke. Because it's actually great in the mirror match to, to destroy Excalibur and then use Maester X effect. Um, one Cowboy. If I had the Silent Honor, I would actually drop the Cowboy for it. Because I, I rarely use Cowboy in this deck. I really do. And one Volcosaurus. Um, if I had <laughs> Exciton Knight, I would drop Volcosaurus for it. But I don't. So, play one Volcosaurus. And then one Guy Charger. Because Guy Charger is pretty good. If you have your... This guy. Um... And yeah, if you summon another noble night monster, you can equip we can overlay Guy Dragon, then all your equips die, re-equip to um your noble night monster, and you just do some like piercing damage and a direct attack. It's actually a pretty good combo. Um alright, that's it for the deck profile. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Remember to leave a comment in the description below of what you guys think. Uh click the like button if you liked it. And thanks for watching. This is Pearl Custard signing out.